Hey, howdy, hey, welcome back to All About That Disney Life. I am Danny B, the girl who is all about that Disney life. We now move on to The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning, which came out in 2008. So let's get to know this cast. Jodie Benson was Ariel. Samuel E. Wright was Sebastian. Jim Cummings was King Triton and Shelbo. Sally Fields was Marina Del Rey. Parker Gorris was Flounder. Carrie Walfgreen was Atina. Tara Strong was Adela and Adrina. Jennifer Hale was Alana. Gray Delisle was Aquata and Arista. Jeff Bennett was Benjamin and the Swordfish Guards. Lorelai Hill Butters was Queen Athena. Andrea Robinson was Athena's singing voice. Rob Paulson was Ink Spot and Swifty. And Kevin Michael Richardson was Cheeks and Ray Ray. Now I move on to the facts all about Little Mermaid 3. We'll just go with that. <laughs> Number one, the production. The working title was The Little Mermaid 3, and it was originally scheduled for a mid-2007 release. When John Lasseter took over Disney Animation, more resources were spent on completing Cinderella 3, A Twist in Time, and attention only returned to this movie in July of 2006 after the wrap-up of Cinderella 3. Why they made a Cinderella 3, I have no idea, but I did not watch it, but I heard it was... A teaser trailer and musical preview of the movie were attached to the Platinum Edition DVD of The Little Mermaid, which was released in October of 2006. At the time, the working title was The Little Mermaid 3, and it was still being used. Like The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea, this movie uses digital ink and paint with the use of the Toon Boom Harmony software. Number two, the release. The movie was released on Region 1 DVD in the United States on August 26, 2008, and on Region 2 DVD in the United Kingdom and Europe on September 22, 2008. The DVD contains special features including deleted scenes, a production featurette hosted by the director, games and activities, and a featurette hosted by Sierra Bodges about the Broadway musical. On December 16, 2008, the movie was released in a Little Mermaid trilogy box set that includes The Little Mermaid and The Little Mermaid 2. Number three, nominations. At the CAS Awards, this movie was nominated for Outstanding Achievement in Sound Mixing for DVD Original Programming, but a loss to Smashing Pumpkins if all goes wrong. And at the Annie Awards, this movie was nominated for Best Animated Home Entertainment Production, but a loss to Futurama, The Beast Within a Billion Bucks. Number four, bonus facts. This likely takes place before the events of the TV series. However, there were some continuity problems between the TV series, this movie, as well as the first Little Mermaid movie. One notable issue is how Flounder and Ariel met. The TV series shows that they met when Ariel was still a child, while this movie shows Ariel to have been a little bit older. Another major plot hole was in the ending. The original movie implied during Daughters of Triton that the concert that Ariel missed was supposed to be her debut appearance in the band, and that her sisters had been veterans in the band. This is something that would not have been possible seeing how Ariel had saved music in Atlantica, which would have made her band leader instead of waiting a year to join. On a related note, the birth order of Ariel's sisters were changed. From both the TV series and the original movie, Aquata, Andrina, Arista, Atina, Adela, Alana, and Ariel. Jim Cummings voices Triton in this movie due to Kenneth Mars being unable to show up for the recording due to his illness. Three years later, Mars passed away from pancreatic cancer on February 12th, 2011 at the age of 75. Before details of the plot were revealed, some fans thought that the premise was going to be about Ariel telling Melody about her origins, which was backed up by Tara Strong being credited as a voice actress involved in the movie, as well as a leaked storyboard where Ariel is conversing with Sebastian and Eric, comes in and asks if someone's acting a bit crabby, and also the teaser trailer in The Little Mermaid Platinum Edition. It was originally planned to make Ariel more contemporary during the development of the prequel. However, Jodie Benson fought to have Ariel retain her characteristic rebelliousness. Not counting the Tinkerbell movies, this is the last follow-up to a movie from the Disney animated canon until Wrath Breaks the Internet, which came out in 2018. This movie marks the final time Samuel E. Wright voices Sebastian, as well as his last role before his death 13 years 
years later in 2021. And it was the last Disney Toon Studio movie to use traditional animation. Number five, the good points and the bad points. Once again, this is based off of the internet's perspective of whether this was a good sequel or a bad sequel. So for the good points, fans liked that it was great to see Ariel's mom. We finally got to see what she looks like, sounds like. She does look a little bit like Ariel, but not so much. Fans are also saying that the character design and animation were great. Fans are also saying that it was useful to learn about Ariel's past. We know where she came from. We know her backstory. Fans are also saying that the movie was beautiful and charming and the songs were fun and catchy. Now for the bad points, fans are saying that the story develops late and very quickly. Fans are also saying that this movie was completely boring. Fans are also saying that the songs weren't catchy. Fans are also saying that they hated the villain in this movie. Also, fans have said that the series was more faithful to the original Little Mermaid movie than this one. And there you have it, all the facts to Ariel's beginning. If you like this video, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. And I hope you have a zippity doo da day. Goodbye.